uh, I love you, just techichila. That's a romantic way to say it, yeah? Techichila. When I say that to your partner, techichila. Techichila. Repeat after me. This is one word. Te. G. Chi. One more time. Chi. La. So put it all together. Te chi chi la. That's the correct way to say it. Te chi chi la. Accent usually is on the second syllable. Te chi chi la. That's how you say I love you in a romantic way. Te chi chi la. You want to say it to your friends and family, you say it. Um shi chi la ke. Yeah, it's a different word. Totally different word. Um shi chi la ke. That one doesn't have a guttural, so it's easier to say. Repeat after me, okay? This one word, we'll say it one syllable at a time. Um shi chi la ke. Um shi chi la ke. Um shi chi la ke. That's how you say I love you to people who are like your friends and like that. Um shi chi la ke. So, touch your two two Lakota for phrases. How about that? This show we do everything. <laughs> anyway, that word, doksha. Now you can't just say toksha. You have to say toksha. Yeah? And not with a D either. That sound is between a T and a D. Yeah? Toksha. It's not doksha. Yeah? It's toksha. It's like a light, light sounding D. Really less, little emphasis. Anyway, don't say that word. That's not a good word to say. Toksha. Doksha is like when somebody asks you to do something. And you say, yeah, doksha, I'll do that. Yeah? That means you won't do it. You're just saying you will, but you don't mean it. That's the energy that that carries. A lot of AIM people, when they say later, they say, doksha, that's really incorrect. That's not correct whatsoever. You have to add another word to that. And that other word is ake. There's two ways to pronounce that word. I mean, one way is ake. Another way is ake. It's pronounced differently, but it means the same thing. Like, say, for example, if you want to say the number 12, it's ake nupa. See? Two again. Yeah? Ake nupa. Yeah? That's for number 12. But when you say doksha ake, see, it's a regular K sound. Doksha ake. That, that's a beautiful, beautiful. Very beautiful expression to say. Doksha ake. That means until next time, because there's no word for goodbye in our language, as in our culture, everything is circular, everything is cyclical. It's very important when you're saying until next time. Doksha ake is until next time. So let's say that, yeah? That's two words, doksha and ake. So let's say the first word first. Doksha ake. Now that do is that spelt with a T, yeah, it starts with a T, but it's it's not to. Yeah, and some people write it as a D, but that's incorrect too. Because it's not do. So if you say it with a D, it's a do. Yeah? But no, what we want is the sound between to and do, and that in between sound is do. It's in it's in the middle, yeah. Doksha. Normally we write that with a line over the T. Doksha. Doksha ake. Very beautiful expression to say. If you want to say I'll see you later, you have to say the I'll see you part. The I see you. Okay? You have to say that part. That part you pronounce it's again it's one word. But it has three things in it. Yeah? Just like the I love you. The I love you has three things in it. When you say techichila, one word. Techichila. It means I love you. 
So this one word, techichila, has a subject, has a verb, and an indirect object. Yeah? So three things in one word. <laughs> Crazy. Huh? That's how our language is, though. This is what you call conjugating. And that's the part that makes it difficult. But once you can understand it, though, then it gets easy. That's what I always tell my students. Once you can understand the conjugating, then it gets easy. So, when you say, I see you, it's going to be very similar, has similar properties as saying, I love you. It's going to have the subject, the verb, and the indirect object, again, all in one word. So, if you want to say, I see you, you say, wa chi ge. Again, accent on the second syllable. Wa chi ge. Yeah? Let's say that one syllable at a time. Wa. Chi. Yang. Ge. Now, do you hear the yang? Do you hear that slight N sound at the end? That's a nasal sound. A nasal N. Yang. Almost like yawn, yeah, like sing it, saying the English word yawn, but you don't finish that N sound. So you say yawn. Wa chi yawn ge. Try that. One more time. Wa chi yawn ge. That means I see you. Okay? But now you want to say this in the future tense. So what you're going to do is you're going to add something at the end of the word and that this is what makes this word a future tense word okay that suffix we'll call it is kte k t e kte not kte but kte yeah? kte and guys they say kte lo kte lo Okay, now we're going to add this kte to wa ge. Okay, now when you do that, you have to change something. The last sound in wa ge is e. You're going to have to change that to e. Yeah? An I nasal sound. E. When I teach Indian kids, when it's like I don't know if other Indian tribes do this, but with uh, Lakota kids, when you like, if you spill water on them, they say "e." <laughs> That's the nasal n, yeah, "e," "e." You, you're going to change that "e" to "e," so "wachiyonge" becomes "wachiyonge." Okay. So wa ge becomes wa ging and then kde. So wa ging kde means I will see you. Okay? So let's try that. One syllable at a time. Wa chi yong ging kde. And the men add low. Okay? So, let's say it all together. Wa ging de. And men add low at the end. Men will say wa ging de lo. Okay? So, that means I will see you. Now, you want to say I will see you again or later? You put the word ake in front. So the expression now becomes ake wa chion king de. Ake wa chion king de. I will see you again. So you just add ake. Say that after me. Ake. Ake. Now let's say the whole thing. Ake wa chion king de. Again, ake wa chiyong de. 
Okay. So guys, they say it like this. Ake wa chion kink de lo. One more time. Ake wa chion kink de lo. Yeah? Okay. That's how that works. So, gee, look at all the things you're learning on this show. You learn how to say I love you two ways, yeah? If to your your honey and and to your um family and friends and you learn how to say until next time doksha ake and you learn how to say I will see you again ake wa chion kinkte for women I mean women say that and men say ake wa chion kinkte lo okay so I should add something when I say for women some people say oh I'm supposed to say ake wa chion kinkte to to women and ake wa chion kinkte to uh, lo to men no 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 women say to everyone, ake wa chion kinkte. And men say to everyone, ake wa chion kinkte lo. Okay? Alright. Z, learning Lakota here. Didn't even, didn't even get started on my intro notes here. <laughs> but they, that's what this show is like. We're live and we're, we have fun. Yeah, so now you, you have a few expressions. I'll teach you one more. This is when you want somebody to get out of the way, like your husband, <laughs> your boyfriend. <laughs> Hanta. You have to say it like that. Yeah? Hanta. You really emphasize that da part. That, again, that's a, a, a hard T sound or a soft D sound. Yeah? It's, not, it's more than T and it's less than D. Like a D, yeah, it's in between. Hanta, that means get the H out of the way. <laughs> and then you can say yo. If you're a if you're a man, you say hanta yo. Yeah. If you're a woman, you say hanta yeah. But most people just say hanta. Yeah. Hanta. You always hear, always hear women saying that. <laughs> Oh man! Anyway, that's enough Lakota for today. <laughs> we don't have a book or whiteboard here, so just just write write down phonetically how you want to yeah to what these things that I just got done saying. Doksha ake. Yeah. 